G'day. In this episode of the Oracle Mobile Application Framework Online Training, it is dedicated to discussing support for events and listeners in the AMX UI component set. So you might have noticed over the various Oracle Mobile Application Framework training videos that we've already seen that there's these hints of something called listeners. For example, when we define an AMX command button, it includes a property action listener. Alternatively, a list view component includes a selection listener property. Now, it's likely that it's not too hard to guess that listeners in math give you the ability to hook in a piece of code to fire, say, when the AMX component button is pressed. Yet, let's take a few steps back to understand the broader concepts of listeners and where they come from. Math is broadly based on Java server faces, which in turn was based on Java Enterprise Edition, or J2EE in the good old days, as it used to be known. And all of this, of course, runs on top of Java under the covers. Java for many years has supported the concept of event-driven programming for applications that require a user interface, implemented initially in technologies like Swing and more recently in technologies like JavaFX. At its simplest, in event-driven programming, an event is a trigger during the running of a program which allows the programmer to define a listener to respond to that event. In an application with a desktop user interface, a very common example is the user clicking a mouse or typing on the keyboard. In a mobile application, the user taps on a button or swipes the screen. Broadly speaking though, events-based programming can support more abstract events too, such as the start, stop, suspension and activation of a program from the background and even more obscure examples like an embedded system responding to interrupts. Regardless how abstract the example, it's a very easy programming model to understand. Something happens, a piece of code fires. Something else happens, a piece of code fires. When nothing happens, no code fires. So who said programming in this model was very complex? It's a very simple programming model. What events are actually triggered is dependent on the language and framework being used. While raising events on CPU interrupts might be useful for an embedded application, this is going to be overkill for, say, our math mobile applications, where we're only interested in mostly user actions like taps and some system events like the app starting and stopping. In turn, even though the framework may define numerous events we can fire code on, it's up to you as the programmer to define the listener that is, the code to fire when the event occurs. If you choose not to define a listener, the event will essentially go unhandled, and that's fine because maybe not all events need to be acted upon in your program. In returning to math, let's specifically have a look at how we would handle an AMX command button being touched by our user, making use of the action listener property and a manage bean. In JDeveloper, I prefer predefined a feature with an AMX page called demopage.amx. If we drag in a button from the component palette, change its textual label, we're then ready to look at configuring the action listener. The easiest way to wire this up from the property inspector with the command button selected in the source code is we select the little cog button next to the action listener property, then the edit option. The Edit Property Action Listener dialog allows us to pick a pre-existing bean and method to wire the action listener to. Or in this case, because no bean exists, we create a new bean. So we'll call this bean HR, make it view scope, and importantly ensure the generate class if it does not exist checkbox is selected. Returning to the previous dialog, as we've just created the bean, there are no pre-existing methods to select, so we'll create a new method do action. Having done that, returning to the AMX page source code, we can see the action listener wired up to call viewscope.hr.doaction. And of course, this is reflected in the property inspector too. Behind the page, we can now see our new Java HR bean under the model package. And finally, if we open that, we can see the do action method for the command button that we also just created. You'll notice that the method created has a very specific specification. Now the method name is up to you, as long as it matches that specified in the AMX command button's action listener EL expression. 
Yet the parameter of that method is the very specific part. For a command control like a command button, the action listener must accept an Oracle ADMF AMX event dot action event object. If it doesn't, the action listener calling the method won't work because it's looking for a method of the same name that returns void with a parameter of that specific type. Alternatively, if you have a list view component with a selection listener, then it requires a method that receives a selection event. As you can appreciate, there are numerous events the framework handles, so I bet you're asking how do you know what parameter each method needs to take? Well, the answer is basically you don't need to, because as you saw when we demonstrated hooking up the managed bean, when we created the listener in our managed bean via the property inspector, it creates the method with the right signature for you. The next thing to realize is that each event object, be it an action event for a command button, a selection event for a list view, or another data view component, or another type of event such as a maps bounds change event or a maps input event for a map component, all event objects like any other Java object contain methods and attributes that you can use in your listener code. Now, the action event doesn't contain much of all that's actually useful in your code, but as example, the selection event includes methods to the keys of the previous and current items selected. The map input event object has methods to return the X and Y position the user tapped on the map, and so on. You get the general idea. As such, each event object has information that may be useful to you to retrieve while handling the specific event in the listener. For the map input event, knowing the X and Y coordinates the user pressed on the map may allow you to find a new marker in the map to plot that location. For this selection event on a list item in a list view, knowing the key of a specific item may allow you to invoke an operation to delete that specific row from the behind the scenes data collection. What you do is really up to you, depending on the type of application you're building and your requirements. But understanding what the event objects past the methods provide is part of the learning exercise for using math effectively. Separately, you might have already noticed that the components you have on the screen are already wired up with appropriate listeners. For example, you may have a list view that looks like this. You'll notice in this example that the selection listener property has an EL expression bindings.stocks.collectionmodel.makeCurrent. Now elsewhere in this YouTube series we talk about the binding layer and these specific EL expressions, but what we will say here is if you use the power of the IDE to create your UI components using the data control palette, then the IDE will take care to hook your UI components up to the data control objects which often already have listeners defined. So in this selection listen example, the collection model for stocks has a method provided by the framework called make current. To mark a list item in the collection, the current item, if the user selects or touches it. This saves you writing the code yourself and again highlights a small productivity booster of Oracle's math solution. So there you go, a very quick look at events and listeners. And as you can see, they're very, very simple. Basically, an event fires on a UI component and you have a piece of a code, a listener, to respond to that event and do something programmatic behind the scenes. In many cases, if you've wired up your pages and UI components from the data control palette, then those listeners are already built in to the framework and will save you coding that yourself. So math saves you a lot of that little coding that you'd have to do in many other frameworks out there. Thanks very much for your time today. Hope to see you in that next Oracle Mobile Application Framework training video very soon.